cannot feed your dog chocolate um chocolate is very toxic for dogs um you know tox uh, basically chocolate has a chemical called theobromine okay um which makes it taste really good and that's what that's the chemical that makes it taste really good um but that is really 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 dangerous for dog so please refrain from giving your dog chocolate whether it's dark chocolate milk chocolate or even um white chocolate hi amika hi shakti how are you doing i'm good great i'm just pinning the comment just give me a second yeah yeah So are you all set for the questions for today? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm really excited to be on live with the dog spot. You guys have uh, you know, through the lockdown got a lot of people to come into live sessions and it's quite nice, you know, to get everyone together uh you know, with one call thing, you know, our pets. So that's quite good. That's nice. No, yeah, I think it's uh I think it's a great way to stay connected um even during the lockdown times and Dog Spot has been doing a great job bringing in people live pretty much every day, uh, and of course, I'm happy to host you. Um, it's a pleasure to know all about you and all about Clever Canine, um, and of course, uh, to hearing your story and to hearing all the good stories about your products. So yeah, so I think we can start with introducing yourself. Thanks. Yeah. All right. And so, I think Stella in the background. So hi, Stella. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, taking a slight nap because she's just come back from her walk. So she's a little tired. Mm -hmm. So she's on the couch behind me. So you know, right. you guys can see her. Now. Yes, um, <laughs> I can see her. Though the though the series of comments just cover her face. Oh, she's. I can feel better now. I think she's listening to what we speak. Yeah, she's looking up. <laughs> so, yeah. Great, and my bad. I've not welcomed all the viewers and participants who've already joined in. Thank you guys for joining in. Um, and Yamika, there are a lot of people who who saying hello to you. Uh, Rana says hi, Yamika. <laughs> yeah. Hi, so. Hello, Rana sir. Who else? I'm just looking through to see if I recognize. So we have a hello from Pet Sutra. We have a hello from Mohit. quite a few people and i'm sorry for not taking all the names right but but yeah a very very big hello to all of you out there to have them all yeah i i do recognize bunny and bella lab they are known to us quite well <laughs> so it's great yeah it's great hello everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah so great i think we should start off by introducing yourself uh, and to uh, the listeners and viewers in case of any questions just write in your question into the comments i'll keep a track of it and i hope that we'll be able to cover all the questions uh during yeah. the conversation sorry i don't know exactly what happened it just uh, you know got the yeah, yeah. just dropped yes i'm glad we could join back in uh and let's just say good things take time so i think good conversation takes time as well so <laughs> <laughs> no issues Yeah, but, but yeah, thanks to the viewers for joining back in. Stay connected. Uh, I hope we don't have any technical glitch happen again. But yes, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you know, hello to everyone joining in, and hi, Shruti. Thanks for having me here on Dog Squad. Uh, so my name is Yamika Damani, and uh, I'm the founder of Clever Canine. Uh, Clever Canine is a pet treat, or rather, a dog treat brand. So. Uh, we basically innovate in natural premium um homemade style uh, dog treats uh so everything is manufactured in small batches uh, we don't use any preservatives in our dog treats um and uh, you know we just like like to have fun with the flavors and things like that uh, you know obviously keeping in mind the uh, uh, dog's nutritional requirements and uh, to be safe for uh, the consumption by dogs so so yeah that's basically it <laughs> Lovely. So tell us a bit about yourself. Um, you know, maybe about what you, what you did before Clever K Nine, and how did you actually start a business in the pet industry? Okay, sure. So, um, so you know, before uh, before I started the uh, pet treats uh, company Clever K Nine, I was dog training. So uh, I have actually been, uh, you know, mentored by Shireen Merchant as well as uh, John Rogerson from the UK. um you may know you may have heard of him 
and uh, so you know i got certified to train dogs and i was uh, training dogs for a couple of years and at the same time i had a rescue dog her name was pixie and uh, you know she had a lot of health related issues um which were to do with you know which i later found out after many years of giving her medication and trying to feed her you know all of these prescription diets that the vets tell you and stuff i later found out that you know it was through a home cooked diet that i could really help uh, you know solve many of her health problems and mm-hmm. um, so i used to you know bake at home for her all of her meals were cooked at home and um, so how it really started was you know it was not planned at all uh, so i was uh, i had taken like a box of cookies to one of my clients place just you know uh, as a little gift for them and at that time i was training a shih tzu um this was for uh, a family um they're basically expats that have you know come to bangalore and uh, they work in tech and stuff so uh, so they were quite excited you know because coming from europe uh, they of course they have a lot of options for pets and then you know they were quite impressed with the fact that these were homemade and natural and their dog really loved the dog biscuits so you know the next time i went over to her place she was like you know what i want to buy some of these uh, dog biscuits and i was like well i'm not really selling them <laughs> they were just you know a, a small uh, token uh, uh, for you guys but um, finally i was like okay fine and that's kind of how one thing led to another and i started like right. baking from home and that's where okay. it really started and now of course we have a, a manufacturing unit uh you know it's a small commercial unit with uh, about uh, four to five of uh, staff uh that mm-hmm. do the production and uh, we are servicing now pan india uh so so that's how it's all that's amazing <laughs> so the best the best businesses are built when it starts with your personal experience i think that holds true in your case as well yeah exactly and a lot of times uh, you know uh, you just nothing is ever planned uh you know yeah. it just sort of happens so that you feel like there's a gap in the market or there's a need for it and um you know you just somehow manage to fill that that gap uh and it's you know pure passion as well is very important in this uh, particular uh, field so that's i think really key right. did you always like baking was baking like your hobby which you always had even before you started clever um, king um personally no um i actually have no you know formal uh, background in baking however uh, my mom and sister do so uh, we like my mom had a bakery in bangalore uh she was running it for around a decade um okay. more than a decade and uh, my sister is also she's a pastry chef uh so i did get a lot of input from them uh you know with regards to the technicalities of baking and stuff like that um uh, but yeah i mean as a family we all love to cook we love to you know we love food we're foodies so uh, it just i think is a natural thing for me okay that's nice so um so two things right one is i mean since your family does baking it it becomes easier i'm i'm sure that would have added a lot of value when you started but it also means that you've had enough experience with pets that you understand what kind of treats so yeah. them well um so have you always had pets do you want to tell a bit about your first experience with a pet yeah so i know about it <laughs> <laughs> um, so i um have been pretty much you know uh, born and brought up around dogs uh, i it's just you know I, i can't even remember our first dog because i was so tiny i was around 2 years old when we had our first pet at home So my dad uh, got this little fur ball, this white fur ball. Uh, we named him Tuffy. He was a Lassapso uh, Terrier mix, and um, he was our first dog. So okay. that was um, almost twenty-eight <laughs> years back. Um, so you know, so uh, and since then we've always had at least two pets in the house, two dogs in the house. Um, so after that we got a black lab as well. So that was our second dog. His name was Peppa, and then um, the third dog was Pixie, who was our rescue, and she was our first rescue actually. Um, so that was quite an interesting experience, um, you know, to have a rescue dog. It really changes you. And do you want to tell a bit about that? Uh, 
you know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would experience rescue dogs, but I think it would be nice to hear a little bit about how that changed your perspective. Yeah, so um, you know, a lot of like like I mentioned earlier, you know, these things are never planned. Like when you um like at least for us, uh, we didn't really plan to get another dog. Um, but uh, Pixie came to us. So uh, basically what happened was that um, I was just walking, me and my sister were walking down our street outside our house and we noticed this really, you know, skinny dog um, full of mange, okay, like completely like malnourished and like, you know, but her eyes and her, like her tail was wagging the whole time. Like she just approached us and her eyes were just like, you know, so adorable. And she looked a bit like a boxer. So we were like, oh my God, you know, somebody's abandoned their boxer and looks like this dog has been on the streets for a really long time. And we like just instantly knew. Uh, and we just literally like, I remember even the day I picked her up in my arms. She was um, a puppy. I think she was around seven months old at the time when we found her. And uh, I just picked her up in my arms and we took her straight to the vet and, you know, got her uh, fixed and all that. So uh, that's kind of how it, how it happened. Right. And, um, and yeah, you know, like I mentioned, she did had a, uh, she had a lot of health related issues um, due to the fact that she went through, you know, uh, puppies during the age of that, when they're developing um, and, and they are malnourished and they are left on the streets um, and they're not getting the kind of nutrition that they require. Uh, they do develop some, you know, health issues which will last for most of their life. Um, it really leaves a scar on their immunity on a whole. So, um, you know, we were not really equipped for that because at that time I didn't really, it was the first time we were getting like a dog that was so, you know, in such a severe condition into the house. Uh, it, we didn't really expect her health to be, you know, till the day she passed away, which was about three years back, she had like health problems. Like it was just something that we had to deal with, you know. So, so I think what, what you can, we, we learned a lot from her. Um, right. Or, uh, you know. <laughs> she, like I think dogs are very very resilient um, and uh, you know they, they're not like humans you know we are constantly complaining about yeah. you know uh, our health and like oh this oh that but dogs are like you know they're super super resilient and I think that's the one thing that you learn from them is that uh, you know uh, whatever it is so long as you have your basic you know needs and you have your family around and you have like uh, you know uh, your basic uh, love and affection around that's all that they need really so so right. yeah something great I yeah I agree so I already see a few questions uh, about your products um, one question a common question being do you deliver products nationwide and another person asking can they find your products in Mumbai um, yeah so uh, we have uh, three different types of products so one is our um, cakes and uh, those are only available in Bangalore and so are the frozen yogurts as of now um, mm -hmm. but our uh, you know our freshly baked dog cookies and biscuits those are available um, on Amazon you can buy them on our website uh, so mm -hmm. mainly ordering online. If you go to Amazon, you'll find, uh, you know, just type Clever Canine Dog Biscuits, you'll find our products there. So, Okay, yeah. great. So um, I also saw a question a little while ago. Uh, someone who said that their dog is a very picky eater. And do you have any suggestions about how they can get the dog to eat okay. better? Um, sure. So I think, I've, I don't know who that person was, but... Uh, if I could just ask the breed of the dog, um, do you remember who the person um, is? I'm just going back. Uh, so then uh, let me just say this. So like some breeds are prone to uh, being fussy eaters and we know mm -hmm. that, um, you know, Shih Tzus, for example, can be quite fussy. Uh, so yeah. did you say Shih Tzu? Yeah. I think she okay, said, yeah. she said Shih Tzu. Yeah. So um, it, it's, a, it's a very common problem with Shih Tzus um, is to be, uh, you know, a fussy eaters. And with Shih Tzus, you have to constantly change the, the food 
and the diet um which is not a bad thing i mean you know uh, you can i don't know if you're feeling capable of home cooked food but if you just add variety and um and anyway shih tzus being smaller breeds um being toy breeds uh, their uh, their requirements for food is like a lot less so we feel like they're not eating but actually you know their requirement for their body weight is is quite less so um so you know you should probably uh, you know weigh the food and see whether the dog is eating as much um as you think he is or not yeah absolutely so another question what are your tips for dogs during summer uh dogs during summer uh yeah perfect so um so a couple of things uh one is to uh you know uh, keep them uh, uh hydrated okay that's the most important thing um uh, some dogs will uh, voluntarily on their own if you leave water bottles around uh, drink water on their own but some dogs actually have the problem of you know we find that they're not drinking uh, enough water and you have to like force them to drink water and that's that's the same with stella she's really bad with water so uh, i often have to mix things in the water um to to make her uh, you know have it so you can do that uh, you can give them fruits um fruits that are or uh, have it in water content so you know melons watermelons uh you can give uh, cucumbers so that's a vegetable you can give um uh, and any fruit really so fruits tend to have a very high water content and maybe you can avoid grapes because those are not very safe for dogs um and uh, another thing is you know of course these are basic things that people know is you know don't walk the dog at the peak of the sun <laughs> so uh, right. try to do early mornings late evenings uh, if you have to take the dog in the middle of the day uh, and uh, you know stella does get three walks so i do take her um once in the morning or uh, then once um, maybe around 4:35 so around now when it's when the sun started to come down a bit and then she gets a post in around 8 uh so right. you can just plan it or uh, you know like that so that should be fine great so two more questions which are in a way similar so one question is how much quantity of biscuits we can give to our dog so what is the quantity of biscuits that are recommended for a dog um and how do we keep a track of what the pet eats on a daily basis in terms of quantity and nutrition okay so uh, i guess those two questions are related um so you know it's it's breed specific so you have to um you know see the ideal uh, it's a small calculation that you do you see the ideal body weight of uh, that particular breed so for example uh, for stella an american bully um and of her size being a female i know that her ideal body weight is 30 kg so um you know i just take i just take 2 2.5% of her body weight so 2.5% into 30 kg which is 2.5% into 300000 grams rather and right. um what you get is around 750 uh, so that is the amount uh, 750 grams is how much of food she needs in a day so that includes yeah. meals and as well as you know you would include treats in there so now you need to figure out you know how big meals you're giving them how many times a day uh, so do you feed once do you feed twice so if you feed once you'll feed um maybe 650 to 700 grams of food whatever food you're feeding them and then um you have around 100 grams 150 grams left for treats so then you can kind of play with that and decide you know um how you uh, want to uh, do that but obviously that being said don't overdo the treats um just because it's uh, you know <laughs> i mean just try to stick to maybe 150 grams of treats a day like tops that's for a dog of this size so again this is going to differ for each breed um yeah. as well as you know um it's going to differ depending on your dog or uh, your dog's particular weight right now if they're overweight then you need to really think of uh, you know reducing the meals um by about 10 15% to uh, to reduce their weight so so yeah great thanks and you have a compliment from mohit lalwani who says that loves them so i'm guessing oh, he's awesome. really... <laughs> thank you <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> so zach loves your treats and i'm sure a lot of pets out there do uh... <laughs> awesome thanks so yeah. 
a follow up question from uh, what you said before about the what about the intake of water content um a follow up question to that is what would you mix in the water mm-hmm. you said if the dog does not really drink water as it is you can mix something that goes with water so that they drink so what any suggestions yeah. exactly so uh, so what i typically do is you can mix around a tablespoon of yogurt um or dahi into the water bowl uh so that um you know makes it more appetizing for them or uh, then another thing because i've tried these things with stella <laughs> another thing that worked when she was a puppy when stella was a pup i remember we would put like um a few drops of coconut oil in the water um okay. because you know dogs like the uh, smell and taste of coconut oil so you can do that or uh, just make sure you're not leaving the bowl out there for more than 24 hours because uh, you know fat and water it might go rancid so you know keep changing it uh, every now and then or uh, maybe about twice a day you can uh, just wash the bowl and then you know add the water and then put the coconut oil or the yogurt um you can even mix in some broth so uh, i don't know if people have like make a chicken soup for their dog or something you can mix a little of uh, broth in there as well um or you could just feed the broth on its own because you know that has a lot of nutrients um and as well uh, you know is got the hydration so that should be good yeah yeah i mean just adding on to that two things that could also work well is probably a little bit of peanut butter um like really a little bit uh, and like my boy loves uh, a little bit of vanilla ice cream like just okay. to me for two bit i'm really not trying to get the taste of ice cream at all but just the feel of that being there in the water i think makes a difference for them so yeah yeah, yeah that's true and you know i mean you can definitely be really innovative in the way that your dog consumes or liquids it doesn't have to be in the form of water or uh, you can right. uh, even give them frozen things like you can um, make a smoothie of from fruits and yeah. freeze it and then you know give them the ice cubes they play with it they eat it or uh, you know at the end of it they're getting in the hydration that they need so yeah. you know in fact um, tender coconut is supposed to be yeah in fact tender coconut is supposed to be really good for the dogs yeah. as well tender coconut as well is really good so yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait. So another question: Is there are there any gadgets that you recommend? Um, uh, I'm guessing this is regarding the uh, keeping a track of how many treats and how much food a dog eats in a day. Um, there are no gadgets really. I mean, like you, you just have to keep it really basic. So, so one is the first thing you need to do is you need to calculate. for your particular dog and you need to know the ballpark figure as to how many grams of food they're supposed to get um what you can do is if you know that okay you're giving them um or uh, 80 like 80 to 90% of their daily requirement in their meals you have 10% to work with you weigh out that 10% in the form of treats and you keep one jar where you have your daily treats in there and you know that okay this is these are the treats that have to be given you know so so that's right. something you can do um or um i guess that's that's really it's pretty straight forward that's that's what you can um can do <laughs> can't right. really think of anything else okay so another question how much uh, percentage of sugar contains in your treat so do your treats have sugar and if so what is the percentage of sugar okay um so no the treats uh, don't have any sugar in them um uh, like no synthetic sugar so if there is sugar it's in the fro- it's in the form of fructose uh, which is a, pl- uh, a fruit based sugar right um so uh, so yeah uh, that is dependent on each dog treat so some of the dog treats like uh, we have some banana cookies so maybe uh there is a content in that so i can definitely share that with them um and you know some of our frozen yogurts also have uh, uh some fruits added to it like mango uh so you know i can share the calorie content and sugar content with them for sure sure so they can and, yeah so um what is your take on kibble is what someone has asked <laughs> okay um so I've had my personal experience with with kibble you know uh with pixie for example as i mentioned earlier um 
when we were trying to figure out a lot of her uh, skin problems like some of her skin issues the vets were recommending giving her different types of kibble you know they were changing the kibble brands every few months and you know saying that okay this one will help you so they never really did uh, <laughs> help so uh, what only helped me was putting her on a home cooked uh, well balanced fresh food diet um and so you know i don't really believe in kibble uh, because it's a very highly processed um product uh, you know it has a lot of uh, preservatives it has a lot of synthetic colors uh, the processes that kibble goes through um you know kills a lot of the nutrients that were a lot from like from the raw materials whatever the chicken they use like those nutrients have been killed because of high temperatures of processing so you know i don't really feel kibble is is great nutritionally but um mm-hmm. if you have constraints where you can't cook for your dog or uh, then you know probably kibble is okay um but try to if you if you are serving your dog kibble just try to add some fresh ingredients to the mix yeah um, yeah you can top it up with uh you know chicken broth you can top it up with some yogurt you can top it up with some uh, fresh vegetables or uh, maybe some pieces of meat um you know so that's probably what you can do but i personally like stella has never eaten kibble in her life um so uh she doesn't even probably know what it tastes like <laughs> mm-hmm. um but yeah for like for me like i personally feel that um you can really uh have a very very healthy dog um uh, on a home cooked uh, diet and also uh, you know this is something worth googling uh, for the person that asked the question um is to actually google uh about the health issues related to kibbles like dogs that are on a kibble diet so i know that a lot of cancers in dogs is related to uh, dogs that are kibble fed okay um, so you know um these are some things to really think about in the long run like you, your dog may look healthy now like he's eating kibble and all that but in the long run um it may not be a very sustainable diet for them i mean if there is a choice between fresh food and kibble i think fresh food it's like it's like humans having uh you know freshly cooked food versus something that's been stored for some time i think the same concept applies for them yeah absolutely and you know a lot of people compare kibble with kfc or mcdonalds it's essentially junk food um you know highly processed food uh, for a human is not good so you can imagine for a dog um it's just as bad right a quick question so in your previous one of the previous responses you said coconut oil mixed with water and someone asked if you meant cold pressed coconut oil yeah or is- you can you can use uh, cold pressed coconut oil obviously the coconut oil has to be uh, cooking oil the one that you use um for cooking food not the one that you put in your hair <laughs> um and if it's cold pressed it's even better uh, i mean that's that's really your choice but yeah stella yeah. gets cold pressed coconut oil in her food yeah i mean we get separate edible coconut oil so i think yeah. that's what we should look for yeah and i think cold pressed um, oils are so easily available now and coconut yeah. oil cold press is just you know any supermarket so yeah that's good <laughs> yeah so okay so i'm glad there's finally one training related question and for those who don't know uh, it's also a dog trainer and she's a baker by profession so uh, if you have any any related questions feel free to ask so i'm glad i've already done that uh, how to handle aggressive dogs with other dogs and what are the vaccinations you recommend what are the vaccinations okay. you put or recommend as well he or she okay. has done right um so uh, there are uh, two types of vaccinations i'll just address the, that question first there are two types of vac- vaccinations one is the co vaccinations uh, so those are the um, vaccinations that are mandatory uh, that if you have a pet dog um, or if you are um, you know uh, vaccinating a stray these are the uh, mandatory ones which are the anti rabies um the canine distemper and parvovirus uh, vaccination so these are uh, these three are the most common diseases in dogs uh, so you know these these are the top three ones that you always vaccinate for 
um the non mandatory vaccinations i don't actually know them in detail i don't have a list of those uh, but uh, you know you can speak to your vet and check whether uh, it would be necessary to give your dog those particular vaccinations um there are i think about six or seven more vaccinations that you can give your dog but that's really your choice um you can speak to your vet to get a better idea okay you have to hand them yeah yeah so um so how to can you just repeat the question how to handle aggressive dogs with other dogs so what i'm guessing by the question is how do you get an aggressive dog socialized with the other non aggressive dogs okay um so that's a that's a really general question <laughs> um so and also you know a lot of times um aggression is something which you like we tend to just put a label on it but it may not even be aggression uh, sometimes you know uh, dogs will just communicate with each other in um, a very dominant way which is not aggression uh, i think aggression is used a little misused the word is misused um but uh, but yeah it depends on the situation so um you know for example i just give you an example of stray dogs um so stray dogs you see them in packs right um and uh, you tend to see uh, signs of aggression from them like if you're walking your dog on a leash and you know you see a pack of stray dogs you will see some signs of aggression right like they are barking growling um they stalk you um you know they come to chase you things like that uh so you know in that particular instance the aggression is more to do with um fear because the the stray dogs are fearful of the new dog coming in to their territory um and if they are fed in that area then they are even probably going to show more signs of aggression because uh that space for them is is their home right and um and any other dog is a threat coming in so there will be aggression from from one of the strays to um like your pet dog i'm assuming this person is talking about walking their dog and then there's aggression or something um and uh, yeah so i guess that's i just took one instance into if they have sure. a follow up question with regards to that they can always uh, yeah i mean yeah i'm sure so if there is a follow up question on this if there is if you have a question julie if that's your name do write in a follow up question and we'll answer that could you recommend what vegetables would be good to add to a meat diet during summers during summers um so i think you partly my... answered it some time back with cucumber yeah cucumber is something you can add uh, so any seasonal vegetables are good so uh, you know what i do for stella's diet for example is that every day whatever vegetables we eat so long as it's safe for uh, dogs to also have um you know the trimmings of the vegetables that we make um at home like we make sabji at home so we peel the carrot or we'll have like the ends with that we don't want to eat um or we may have you know chopped up some veggies that we wanted to use and cook but we didn't or we have roasted some pumpkin and it's lying in the fridge for a day and you don't know whether you're going to eat it i just add all of that into um the meal and um you know that's kind of you know how i do it i don't um actually go out shopping for the dog uh, you know we will have vegetables in our fridge um yeah. you can just use those uh, so you can use um so these are some of the vegetables i give stella so you can give um uh broccoli uh you can give cabbages so red cabbage as well as really really high in iron then you have um you can give uh, loki so these are some of the um indigenous indian vegetables also are very very high in nutrition so like uh, loki is a good vegetable that you can give um uh, tori which is uh, basically rich god uh you can give uh, that as well um and spinach spinach is also really good for them beetroot pumpkin these are things that have, yeah great green vegetables are generally quite good to give all year round um so you can do that you can also add fruits to their meal so if you're cooking your chicken and rice and adding veggies you can add a few slices of apple 
um, if you think your dog will like the taste, and um, I think they generally will because it will add like a sweetish flavor to the food. Um, so once in a while you can do that. Um, it's nice to surprise them, you know. So every every day, every other day when I cook her meals, there's always a new vegetable in there or some some different combination, you know. So uh, yeah. it's it's really fun to watch her eat, and she's always like excited, like you know, okay, what's going to be there for dinner today? Kind of yeah. Thing. So. Uh, keep changing it around, play with it, but I agree. make sure that it's safe for your dog to eat. Of course, yeah. I mean, I agree because uh, especially for dogs which are on kibble diet or the same diet pretty much every day, I think even one vegetable per day could make a big difference for them. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, and you know, you need to if you're doing a home um a home cooked diet, you need to make sure that you're doing a well balanced diet. Um, so uh, the general rule is fifty percent protein, uh, twenty five percent carbohydrates, which is in the form of uh, rice or potatoes, um, lentils, things like that, and twenty five. The rest balance twenty five percent is vegetables. So um, you need to. Uh, there is a science behind it. You know, it's you know people they do wanna. Um, Take the initiative to cook at home for their dogs, but I really hope you guys are doing it right. If you have any questions, you can always email me after this. Um, yeah, I mean, towards the end of this conversation. conversation. Yes, towards the end of this conversation, uh, I'm sure Yamika will also share details about how you all can get in touch with her directly in case of any questions. Um, yeah. So another question is about a dog drink. So how how do you make a dehydrated dog drink? With maximum amount of water, which actually partly you answered some time back. Um. Yeah, exactly. So, um, if your dog is showing signs of dehydration, um, you need to rush it to the vet uh, if it's severe or uh, signs of dehydration. And how you can check that is um to actually check uh, the gums. So, what you would do is you would just uh, press the gum, and if you feel that uh, the blood has not um come back like you don't see if you pressed it and it stayed white the gum and it's not like uh, you know the this blood flow is not there that's one sign um and there are another couple of signs of dehydration so you know make sure your dog is not clinically dehydrated because then that's something that you can't um, sort out at home um so you would have to immediately rush it to a vet and probably get it drips but i'm guessing your dog is not clinically dehydrated but just you know probably not consuming as much water uh in that case so uh, you know like i said just keep it really fun um you can do frozen treats especially in the summer you can like even just blend some watermelon and coconut water in your mixie pour it into ice cube tray freeze it and then you know give them uh, three to four ice cubes a day and you know that should get that something good said i think that tastes good for us as well not just for the dogs yeah sounds you like a yummy drink for us yeah i mean watermelon with sounds coconut like margarita <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah so my feel good idea for all of us to try it along with probably one of the few things we can have with our dogs so not a bad idea for yeah. us to well <laughs> exactly exactly Great. so someone uh, kiran says that we have an emergency service like 108 is there any such service for pets in case of emergency or in case of any panic moments uh not that i know of shruti um it depends on which city you are in um so i know that in bangalore uh, because i'm from bangalore so i know that in bangalore we have a uh, 24 hour ambulance service from sesna lifeline veterinary yeah. clinic um so you know i think that's uh, in bangalore and i'm sure other cities will also have it i'm i'm just thinking of the you know chain of vet veterinary clinics in bombay i think maybe crown vet might have it i don't know but you may want to mm-hmm. just um you know uh, probably uh check with your vet for any recommendations on that yeah but um, mm-hmm. the government has not you know the government has no emergency helpline for um your house pets um if it is an emergency for um, maybe a, a a dog or that you like a animal that you've seen on the street that's hurt um you will have to call one of your local ngos um to come and rescue the animal so so that will be different in every uh, city 
Yeah, I mean, um, for the person who's asked this question, Kiran, uh, oh, in case you need support with that, uh, you can always reach out to Yamika or DocSpot or us. So there are quite a few companies like us who are trying to handle such situations even during the lockdown. So do reach out to us in case you need any help. Yeah. Because um, it'll also be good for us to know which city you're riding in from, so that we can connect you to organizations in that particular city. But, but I think yeah. I think there are a good number of pet companies now to help in any given situation. So, yeah, so I'm sure we should be able to yeah. do some. So, um, someone has an interesting question. Uh, interesting for me. I'm not sure about you, but when do you plan to come up with dog food? Do you have such plans? <laughs> um. I actually have been asked this question a lot of late. Um, so I am thinking about it. Um, but yeah, again, I think initially that will just be, uh, I'll only be able to service the Bangalore market uh, because yeah. I, I, you know, how, how I only believe in fresh meals. Um, so it's something that I would probably start off in Bangalore and then see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, sure. Um, I'll definitely take that into consideration and maybe start soon. So yeah, after the lockdown, let's see. Yeah, just on a funny note, I think the ones in Bangalore have the privilege of tasting Yamika's dog food first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have we have the um, we have the first access to your you know you to to the dog food you come up with. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I'm just like, sure. <laughs> so I'm just letting the listeners know that I think we have about 10 minutes more. Uh, so we'll try to answer okay. as many questions as we okay. can. So um, I actually saw a question here, Shruti. Somebody asked, um, if they said, my Shih Tzu loves chocolate. Can I feed chocolate and in what frequency? Um, okay. So the answer to that is no. <laughs> Absolutely no. Uh, you cannot feed your dog chocolate um chocolate is very toxic for dogs um you know tox uh, basically chocolate has a chemical called theobromine okay um which makes it taste really good and that's what that's the chemical that makes it taste really good um but that is really 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 dangerous for dogs so please refrain from giving your dog chocolate whether it's dark chocolate milk chocolate or even um white chocolate uh, and apart from that, it's generally, you know, chocolate bars are highly processed. They have a lot of other stuff in there, which is also bad for your dog. Sugar, for example. So, no, I would not recommend that. You are, however, nowadays getting, actually, I have it right here. You're getting chocolate yeah. for dog. I was about <laughs> I mean, to say that. I have it here because I, I like, I have it for Stella. This is the one. I yeah. Know it, so, this one is ah. a white chocolate for dogs. This is what it looks like. Um, and uh, this is the first time I got it for Stella. She seems to really like it. And I'm actually pretty okay with the ingredient list. It's not that bad. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, you can just uh, probably buy a dog chocolate. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, this chocolate is supposed to be really good because my boy like, loves it as well. And, you know, along with the white chocolate, they also have, a uh, uh, dark chocolate, which looks very yeah. similar to what we eat. So yeah. I think you can you can give that to your dog without feeling guilty about you eating a chocolate. But our chocolate is a strict no no to all the dogs. Yes. Human chocolate is an absolute no. Um, so in the dog chocolate that you're talking about, Shruti, the one which looks like dark chocolate, which is the same brand, um, Tracy, yeah. um, basically they've used an ingredient called carob. Um, carob mm -hmm. is an alternative to uh, cocoa beans mm -hmm. and um, that is safe for consumption for dogs. In fact, it's very healthy for them as well. Uh, so um, carob, you can just Google it to you know, learn a bit more about it. It's, it's basically a plant-based, um, uh, it's a bean, which then they remove the powder, they make the powder and then you can use that to uh, flavor. It tastes very similar to chocolate. But it's a little bitter, but it's totally safe for your dog. So, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, before this question, we had a few questions, Yamika. So I'm just going back to the mm -hmm. um, because one commonly asked question, which I think is important for us to address, is um, are Palaji biscuits good for dogs? Because we know, like, 
we a lot of times we've also given palliative to dogs so it's good for us to know whether it's actually good to give them mm-hmm. um so so yeah i mean i was hoping this question came up because i was actually thinking about it today um you know i started recently feeding strays in my area um and uh, you know i noticed that uh, you know sometimes when i go to give them the food that i make for them i notice that people have left palliative biscuits for them um and um i just feel really bad that somebody has you know done that a uh, palliative biscuits again are highly processed they are not made for dogs um they're full of sugar um you know maida uh, it's just really it's not even good for people <laughs> i think palliative right. biscuits are really high in sugar uh, and so processed that they're probably not even good for us to consume so you can't give a dog a palliative biscuit and expect it to be nutrition like have any form of nutrition um i would uh, seriously recommend at least if you can buy dog biscuits you know any brand of dog biscuits that will at least be better than palaji um right. and you know just make sure there's no sugar in them maida is at least okay fine you know if you can't help it like okay it's there i would really still not recommend it um right. but sugar is a definite no um try to feed more nutritious things to to dogs um you know <laughs> you can feed a meal there's nothing like it you know some meat and rice um that will right. fill their belly up and you know they be quite satisfied uh, but but yeah palaji biscuits is is a no right so i think um i mean thanks to all of you who have a series of questions but i think before it's too late yamika you might want to tell them how they can reach out to you in case of further questions yeah sure uh so thanks everyone for being here and uh, you know staying through the entire session uh and you know hello to all my friends that have uh, signed in i can see everyone saying hi um and you know uh and thanks for everyone who asked really relevant questions yeah. um and i hope that i was able to help you guys uh to figure out uh you know the best for your dog uh, i'm always always happy to answer more questions and you know help people out with their pets uh because they are family at the end of the day and i uh, we only want the best for them and uh, you know that's my motto so uh so you can definitely reach out to me you can email me um so my email address is hello at the rate clever canine dot in um which you can you know you could just go to the insta page for clever canine you'll find my website with all the contact details um as well as uh, you can just send a dm that's easy i handle the insta account for clever canine so i'll probably see your message first and i'll be able to you know help you out with your questions as far as possible uh, if i'm not able to answer them um i will direct you to the right person who can help you with that uh, but yeah please feel free to reach out i'm i'm really happy to connect with you know pet parents as well as people that take care of strays you know or who have questions about what they can feed strays and stuff um so so yeah please feel free to reach out insta yeah. is the best to reach out to me so <laughs> Thanks, Yamika. I think we'll take two very relevant questions, uh, you know, before we end the chat. Uh, one is what should be included in the diet for overweight dogs, particularly with hip dyslexia and arthritis for weight loss. I think it's an important question because we see a lot of dogs that are overweight and taking necessary steps with their food is very important. What are your suggestions there? Yeah. absolutely um yeah you know hip dysplasia is really common in dogs and so is being uh, overweight uh, and there's two reasons uh, for that or uh, the you know and they kind of go hand in hand if you have a overweight dog they're more likely to get hip dysplasia uh, because it's putting a lot of pressure on um you know if they're already prone to having it genetically like it's going to not basically make it clear uh, so the first thing i would do is um you know you need to or uh, give your dog the exact amount of um the requirement nutritional requirement in a day um so like i said you have to calculate the amount in the, the number of grams of food your dog needs in a day and you know if you're trying to make them lose weight reduce that amount which is the ideal for your breed reduce that by about 15 to 20% and you will see the dog losing weight in, in a few months um there's no quick fix you can't really you know make a dog lose weight within a couple of days um 
because essentially what you cannot do is you can't just be like okay today i'm giving him this much food i want to make him lose weight so i'll just give him half the quantity and you know let him starve <laughs> so that's really bad um yeah. because it's it's going to backfire on you so you have to gradually reduce the food quantity by you know 10% to 15% to 20% um so so that you know they they lose weight in a healthy way um uh and secondly for the hip dysplasia uh, you will need to give them supplements uh glucosamine supplements are uh, generally what's recommended for joint health um so uh you can get them over the counter um as well as if you, if you want to give glucosamine um in the form of uh you know in a more natural way you can give them bone broth um so you basically there's a you have to like cook the bones of the of the meat whether it's chicken or mutton you have to cook the bones down for like 8 12 hours and what you get is all the nutrients all the marrow from the bones of the animal that you cook and that's the soup that you want to serve your dog so that's also really good um so that's something that you would give them in addition to supplements that your vet has suggested um and uh, you know those are two things um in relation to diet however i just want to make another mention is that the lifestyle of the dog is also very important very uh, the dog that has you know joint related issues um you know dogs that are going up and down the stairs too much please stop doing that um slippery or uh, flooring smooth flooring all of us have either tile or marble or granite flooring in our house uh, in india we don't have carpeted flooring um so you know your dog is going to uh, slip while he's walking on the floor and that's going to put more pressure to his joints it's not, it's going to basically not let your dog's joints um heal it's going to cause a lot of pain so try to keep you know maybe rugs around the house where wherever you see your dog walking the most to get from point a to point b put a rug in that passageway so that it's easier for him um to walk and um, of course keep the exercise to minimal right great I think last question for now uh, which is again an interesting question for me as well uh, because i've seen this happen a lot of times which is so when you feed chicken and rice for so someone asks that she has about 40 strays and she feeds them chicken and rice and they eat that well but they don't eat pedigree so the question is what is the reason that they don't eat pedigree yay <laughs> <laughs> okay um so the basically what that's telling you is that you know um it's it's just amazing you know how dogs can communicate this to us um they are not eating it because it's not a you know appropriate diet for them um not only is it uh you know completely synthetic but uh, it's it's probably um you know they they would prefer the real food to um to the kibble so uh so yeah i mean you shouldn't be worried about it um uh there's no reason to be giving them uh, pedigree or kibble if you're feeding them chicken and rice please continue with the chicken and rice maybe add some veggies to it um and yeah we should be good great thank you so much uh yamika i think you've answered all the questions and i hope we've covered all the questions uh in case we missed any question i apologize and i'd request you to write directly to yamika i'm sure she'll be more than happy to answer your questions um and do check out products from clever k9 on their website and on their instagram page i'd seen one question in between who'd asked if you make healthy dog biscuits um and yes we do <laughs> please yeah. do check out my insta handle check out website um you know if you have any particular questions about the products or uh, you can just dm and i will be there to answer you so uh, yes so and do reach out yeah and i like how she's drafted the question but because yes they make only healthy only healthy dog biscuits so you should check them out <laughs> yeah, um, yeah 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 exact yeah and and last question from me yamika uh, before we end the conversation why is the name clever canine like what is how did you come up with the name and what does it mean 
Um, so you know, like you know, my work is totally dedicated to Pixie, who uh, who's my who is our rescue dog, and you know, she's like all the inspiration behind the brand. Um, so even in the logo, the Clever Canine logo, there's an illustration of her face. Um, and Clever Canine because uh, you know, she was a really really intelligent dog. Like uh, she was so trainable. Um, you know, I was just uh, I was just quite. surprised at how intelligent she was and so that really inspired me to call it clever canine and you know you realize that all dogs are really intelligent just given um a choice they can um, you know really learn so many things so yeah <laughs> great <laughs> let's hope that stella did not feel bad about you uh mentioning she passed out she is like totally passed out i don't know what she is but she's like and he's on also so she <laughs> she's uh, quite relaxed But yeah, maybe next time she'll you know uh, interact a bit more. Sorry about this yeah. time. Yeah. No, that's all right. We at least got to see her, so I'm sure all the viewers. I and mean, when I'm very happy to really see her. <laughs> so you you were talking, but I my my focus was all on her about how she's moving. So I saw her move her head quite a few times yeah. <laughs> while you were talking. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yami. Yami, ka lovely uh, talking to you, and I'm sure I'm sure, and I look forward to. uh more products from clever canine Absolutely. thanks for asking all the questions yes thanks and thanks everyone for being on here and you know stay home stay safe and uh you know happy to connect so yeah yeah take care take care <laughs> okay see yeah. you bye bye <laughs>